Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services in Denver, Colorado. Today, I am addressing something that comes up a lot that I see in my holistic nutrition practice, where sometimes a client who is taking a supplement that is commonly used for hair, skin, and nails can actually affect a thyroid test negatively. So I'm going to answer the question today, why does biotin supplementation interfere with thyroid testing? Maybe this has happened to you, so thanks for watching. So if you have hypothyroidism, you may be losing hair. You may have conditions that are affecting your skin, or you may have noticed that your nails are particularly brittle. So maybe you've read an article or spoken to your, um, maybe your esthetician or a dermatologist or your primary care doctor who suggested that you start taking biotin. Also, biotin is found in a lot of multivitamins, B-complex vitamins, and it's also even in things like shampoos, certain lotions, and other skin and beauty care products. So biotin is pretty widely available. We actually get a decent amount of it from foods as well. But if you're taking this as a supplement, an individual biotin nutrient supplement, you may be getting more than what you need and it may interfere with your thyroid tests. So I'm gonna explain just a little bit about, first of all, biotin. Um, it's a B vitamin, technically, um, and it's water soluble, which means it does not get stored by the body. It basically goes into the body, it gets used, and then it gets excreted. And um, it is uh, really part of the process of helping your body to process glucose and to metabolize proteins, fats, and carbs. So it's a big component of healthy digestion of our macronutrients. The body cannot make biotin, so therefore it is an essential nutrient. And yes, it is found in foods, as I said, meat, fish, eggs, organ meats, seeds, nuts, sweet potatoes, spinach, broccoli. It's actually in a lot of foods that we eat healthy foods, and it's also in many processed foods. Um, biotin can also come from bacteria in your gut as a byproduct. Um, so sometimes, um, depending on what's going on with some of your digestive health, you may also have an additional source of biotin that's coming from those bacteria. I'm not going to go into that today. But bi biotin deficiency, although rare, Many people associate some of these common hypothyroid symptoms as being related to a biotin deficiency. If you do have a true biotin deficiency, it would cause thinning hair or loss of hair, including body hair, eyebrow and eyelash hair, and also uh, changes to your texture and consistency of the hair on your head. Many people who are having biotin deficiency experience rash around the eyes, nose, mouth, or even in the anal area, which would cause itching, redness, and soreness. Sometimes people who have chronic pink eye infections is actually related to biotin deficiency. Um, so skin infections, brittle nails, um, and hair issues, these are really the things that stand out the most, but also depression, lethargy, fatigue, and also feeling like a pins and needles in the extremities, kind of like, a, like you're, you fell asleep on your arm, that can also be a sign of biotin deficiency. But again, there, it's not that common. So as I said, it's quite available in foods. And also we find that there are body products that contain biotin. So if you're using any of these, these products and formulas to support hair, skin, and nails, we just need to be cautious that it is not going to be toxic for you or to interfere with your thyroid testing. You would have to be supplementing with a lot of biotin in order for it to be toxic and create any really unpleasant side effects. But the most common thing that I see is that a person supplementing with biotin above, say, the recommended amounts can cause some false results in their lab tests including measures of thyroid hormone. So I've actually been working um, with a recent client, this is kind of a case study report, I guess, where it was confusing because her free T4 levels seemed to be very high and it almost appeared 
that she was being over-medicated with her thyroid um, hormone uh, medication that she was taking for Hashimoto's. So based on these elevated free T4 levels, um, it, the, her prescribing physician assumed that this meant that she didn't need as much levothyroxine. And so her dose was reduced, and subsequently, unfortunately, my client started to feel very, very poor, and her hypothyroid symptoms came roaring back. It was actually her biotin supplementation that she was taking in a pretty common over-the-counter hair, skin, and nails formula, not to mention a biotin shampoo that she was using that had falsely elevated free T4 levels in her blood. So this is what I think is so interesting is that a lot of times, again, if you have hypothyroidism, you have Hashimoto's, you're probably doing all the things that you can. You're doing all the things that you can think of to help support your body and especially to eradicate some of the most annoying complaints and symptoms like skin, hair, and, and nail health. I have another video about hair loss. So if, that, if this feels familiar to you and you want to learn more, go ahead and check out that video. But because we do a lot of things naturally to support our bodies, sometimes we don't recognize that there may be drug and nutrient interactions and there may be false reporting on lab tests. So I encourage you just to double check your supplements. If you've been getting some elevated free T4 levels on some recent blood work, make sure that you're not getting an unusually high amount of biotin. Um, as I said, it's pretty hard to overdose, but you don't want to be taking more than what is necessary. A lot of um, multivitamins may contain um, about, say, 5 to 10 milligrams of biotin. That's either in a multivitamin or maybe even potentially in your B-complex vitamin. This amount doesn't seem to be too harmful, but sometimes it's in the more specific um, and advanced kind of hair, skin, nail formulas that may be increasing biotin levels even beyond that. Plus, if you're taking your multi and combining it with one of these formulas, then you may be getting more than what you need. Beware of the shampoos that do contain biotin. While it seems like it may help with the texture and condition of your hair, it does get absorbed through your scalp. And so that too can also contribute to elevated biotin levels that can have this kind of negative effect on your blood work for thyroid. So um, today is a shorter video. I really just found it to be very helpful, especially that I do work with clients who've had this sort of phenomenon happen. It is always great when we can go back and retest and she can show, this particular client could show her um, prescribing physician, listen, I think since I've stopped my biotin, maybe my t free T4 levels are back in more of a normal range and I probably am on the wrong dose of thyroid medication. So work closely with your prescribing physician, work with someone who's board certified in holistic nutrition who can help you troubleshoot and find some of these kind of needle in a haystack problems that can come up with Hashimoto's. I have lots of other videos in my Hashimoto's playlist, but also if you've watched all of those, maybe go check out some of my other videos in the detox and family nutrition video playlists. Remember to like, subscribe, share, turn on your notifications, and I'll be back with more videos soon. Thanks for watching.